Hello everyone. Sometimes viewers of the channel send me packages with useful radio hobbyist goodies. As a rule, I don't show such packages, but this time I decided to try this format. If the audience supports it from time to time, such videos will be released. There are two packages. I received them over the last couple of months. The box is quite large and fairly heavy. Let's start exploring the contents and they are quite interesting. In careful packaging, there are a couple of wonderful artifacts. At first glance, nothing unusual, just simple incandescent lamps, but in fact, they are quite rare. These are low voltage lamps, only 8 volts, but each of these bulbs has a power of 100 watts. They illuminate in approximately this way. A 100 amp, high voltage shunt for an ammeter, with a 75 MV drop. Looking ahead, I'll say that I've already used this shunt in one of my new projects. The video will be out soon. One of the most popular switches from the Soviet era is the AZS automatic switch. This model is rated for 5 amps, 27 volts. As a switch, it's a very good piece. As a protection device, this particular line is slow due to the use of a bimetallic element. Therefore, if you need a fast-acting switch, these AZS models won't do. The house would burn down faster than the AZS would activate. I know many of you thought about the knob at the end of the switch. Yes, it glows in the dark, but the luminescent material is temporary. So, it's not dangerous. In early models, the luminescent material was made from radioactive radium-226. By the way, there will be plenty of radioactive artifacts throughout this video. So, let's get a dosimeter ready, just in case. In another small box, there are good old MEON indicators and quite decent high-frequency bipolar transistors KT935 and KT926. Completely new. These transistors are used in RF amplifiers, generators, and transceiver devices. The transistors are almost identical in their characteristics. The collector's direct current is about 15A. The pulse maximum is up to 25 to 30A. The cutoff frequency is at least 50 MHz. In the next box, there's a little bit of everything. A pair of Optothyristors 2, 132 40, 40 amp at 600 V. The feature of Optothyristors is that they already have a built in infrared LED. This means that the thyristor control system can be galvanically isolated from the high voltage network part. These thyristors came with their own heat sinks. Such thyristors can be used in phase pulse controllers or as a powerful electronic switch. In general, they won't be unnecessary in the household. Brand new T3 toggle switches. Great little toggles. These are rated for a current of 3 to 5 amps, but they can handle much more. They can be used anywhere. The tip of the toggle switch also has a greenish luminescent material. In the same box, there were micro switches variable trimmer resistors, and a rotary switch. Such things never get old and will always be in demand. And the best part at the end. Power thyristors TC125-7. TC125-7. These thyristors are notable for being high frequency and can operate at frequencies up to 25 kHz. Considering a decent average current of 125A and a voltage of 700V, such thyristors can be successfully used in inverter converters and rectifying devices. Based on them, you can even make a welding inverter. The maximum current of the thyristor is 196A, and the peak and short-term current is up to 3500A. The thyristor can be successfully used as a powerful switch. And now, what I wanted most for my collection. Meet the Power Silicon Transistors TK152-100, K152-100N, NPN structure. Yes, these are indeed transistors, even though they look like thyristors. There are five transistors, apparently on their original massive aluminum heatsinks. This can definitely be called a power module. These are some of the most powerful transistors produced in the USSR. The maximum allowable pulse collector current is as much as 100 amperes. 
the maximum allowable continuous collector current is 63A. And by the way, this is a bipolar transistor, not a field effect one. The dissipated collector power is a whole 350W. The collector emitter voltage depends on the transistor's index. Where can such transistors be used? Well, anywhere. Powerful power supplies, chargers, electronic load amplifiers, control circuits as a switch. They have been tested and they work. But where to use them, I haven't decided yet. As for the reliability of these transistors, unfortunately, I can't say, as I haven't worked with them before. The next package was sent by a subscriber named Oleg, who got in touch with me. He offered to send me a soldering iron that I would definitely like. In fact, I received not only the soldering iron but also some very interesting components. This package also contains gadgets that suspiciously glow in the dark. More precisely, an aviation ammeter whose dial also blows. There is a suspicion that it's radium. Yes, there was a time when radium was applied to anything, from compass needles to watch dials. This package also includes an AZS toggle switch. Let's gather all the suspicious items together and run them through the legendary updated radios can, 701E dosimeter. It's a household device, but it has many features typical of professional dosimeters. In search mode, the radios can can detect radiation very quickly. The measurement is purely for demonstration. Background readings are 12 to 15 microwenkens. As we can see, nothing above the background level. Just in case, let's check the dosimeter's reaction to a substance with the americium-241 isotope. Activity is 1 microcurie. The radio scan uses a Geiger-Muller counter type beta 1.1, which is sensitive to alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, and the measurement limit is 1 Rentgen, which is a very high indicator for a household dosimeter. The reputation of the Radioscan 701 is well deserved, unlike other household devices. It is extremely fast, accurate, and very sensitive. You can find the link in the description. Let's continue. A set of diodes, B10. Despite their size, they are only rated for 10A, but with good cooling, they can certainly handle more. Various transistors, including high voltage KT838, can be used in network switching power supplies. The old, reliable, warm germanium transistors P.210 with a collector current of up to 12A. These old timers are quite good considering their age. I think I still have time to make something based on them, some kind of retro project. The sender of this package initially contacted me and offered to send me an interesting soldering iron, which was mentioned earlier. And here, it is in front of you, that very soldering iron. I suppose I'll call it a soldering iron, of any wattage you like. Until the 70s, such soldering irons were quite popular. We are used to soldering irons with ceramic heaters, induction soldering stations are gaining popularity, and in this case, the heating element is invisible because it simply doesn't exist. The tip is heated over an open flame and then used for soldering. The tip itself. A copper block mounted on an iron rod. What more do you need for complete happiness? The versatility of such a soldering iron is off the charts. It can be heated with anything, even a lighter. It can be used as a cold weapon or as a poker. Can your Hakko T12 do that? It's only for soldering. But here you have a whole multifunctional device for all occasions. Another retro item. From the same package, an analog AC ammeter. At first glance, nothing unusual, an ammeter like any other. But pay attention to the date, the 50th. Year. This ammeter is almost 70 years old. Truly, a museum exhibit. But despite that, it is in fully working condition. For some people, most of what is shown is unnecessary junk that needs to be disposed of quickly. 
But such items are becoming fewer and fewer every day. They will never be produced again. Modern devices are made to be disposable on purpose. It's not profitable for anyone to make everlasting devices, but in the old days, it was different. I am familiar with Soviet devices firsthand. Maybe they, made with a chisel and hammer, aren't as attractive, but in terms of reliability. No, well, even in the Soviet era there was mass-produced junk, but that junk was better than today's. I thought it was time to wrap up. If you're interested in heartfelt reviews of old technology, there's a corresponding playlist on the channel. Link in the description. Don't forget to subscribe to my Instagram, and with that, it's time for me to say goodbye. As always, this was Kasyanaka with you, and until next time, goodbye.